Hey, you folks, it's Robin Robbins, founder of TMT. I'm here with Mario Zaki um, at Maztec IT, and uh, he is one of this year's Better Your Best finalists, which is quite an accomplishment. Um, I've been running this contest for now 17 years, and I'll tell you, every year it gets tougher and tougher. I mean, the average person in this competition added over a million dollars to their business. Um, so, so Mario, congratulations. Thank you for taking some time with me here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Robin. You're welcome. So, um, first of all, people are going to see a boot camp, but tell everybody a little bit about your business, just so they know, get to know you before they see you on stage. Yes. Yeah, so we are um, we're located in New Jersey, about 15 minutes from uh, New York City. Uh, we've this June is going to be our 20 year anniversary, but wow. for the first 15 years of the, of of that 20 was just me as a one man shop, just working out of uh, the van. Yeah, you know, when I was reading your your content, and, and here's what's interesting, all the better your best have different stories, different backgrounds, slightly different approaches. And and the thing that you said over and over again, you're like, hey, I was like, con I was content. I had, you know, 15 years, I'm doing break fix, I'm making a good living, I'm nice car, nice home, like, why would I mess this up, right? So I'm, I'm just curious, um, you know, what was it? I mean, I know you talked about getting the letter from me, but there had to be more. That maybe was the spark. But what was it like? How did your mind transition from going, hey, I'll just be a tech with helpers or not even with helpers. You're like, hey, I'll just do it all myself because that way I keep all the money. Like, how did your cha thinking change to where you're now two million and growing? And who knows, you know, 10 million is pro I wouldn't be surprised if you go you know, as fast as you've gone. Right. Tell me about that process of how your thinking changed. So, you know, even though I was doing okay, the problem is as a one man shop and everybody out there knows it's, it's a lot of work. It's, it, you know, you're up at like six o'clock, you know, in the morning getting calls, uh, you're working till like 10 o'clock at night on a, or on a good day. It, it's exhausting. And, for me at that time when i received the your letter i had my you know my kids were four and five years old i did want to enjoy more time with them and as you know and i pretty much said it earlier like uh i had a job i didn't have a company you know i couldn't take a t day off i couldn't go i couldn't take a sick day or you know it wasn't easy for me to go and see like my kids you know, kindergarten, like, you know, musical, you know, so it was hard to do that. I didn't have the freedom that you would, even as an employee of a company, taking a personal day, it was that mentality that it was hard. I'm like, all right, I'll just work a little harder. I don't need to go see, see every little recital. I, you know, stuff like that. That's what made me want to change. Very good. No, I think that's great because there are a lot of, you know, our audience it runs the gamut, but we have a lot of people who are joining MSP Launch Academy. They'll be in the audience watching you. And I'm sure you're going to get a lot of them coming to you um, asking this. And and so I guess when you decide your break fix, you're working from 6 a.m. to 10, you're, you're, you're really um, going after it. Like what were the biggest changes you initially made that had the, the greatest impact? Um, the biggest impact for me was, was, it rapid, you know, and I, I don't, you know, I'm sure you don't remember, but I actually came up to you and I asked you, like, this sounds all great. Like, I don't know what to do. What do I do first? Do I hire an, um, do I hire a salesperson? Do I hire a technician? Do I go with it? And you're like, slow down, you know, hire an admin, get everything. I've heard, try to help you get everything organized. And rapid was a big, a big thing uh, for me, but the most underrated, which I still think it's the most powerful campaign you have on the dashboard is the good news, bad news, because that campaign gave me the ability to have a foundation, bring in some monthly recurring revenue, be able to rent an office, hire an admin, hire a technician. Um, that's, that's the single most important campaign that anybody as a one man shop or doing break fix should be running. That should be what they built all their marketing around, in my opinion. Yeah.
Yeah. So you, just so I'm, so you, like, I agree, hire an admin first, hire the lowest level busy work you can offload, like hire that first, not like somebody up here, you know, like in sales, cause you can't afford them and you still got to coach them and it's all the things. So yeah, so do that. The good news, bad news is a campaign for trans, just so everyone knows is, is um, converting those break fix customers to manage. And there's a strategy behind it. You could take a couple different approaches. You can, uh, you can either take a hard line and say, sorry, if you don't become managed services, we're not serving you or kind of a soft lob, like, Hey, this was nice. So which, which approaches you take with your customers? I, I took more of the soft one. What I ended up okay. doing, I, I told them like, you know, at the time, I think my hourly rate was like $65 an hour, or like $75 an hour. I told them it was going up significantly. And, and what I did is I, I set, set up, up a, like a QBR with every single one of them. And I gave them like a printout of all their expenses, their IT expenses for the year and the month, like how much they're paying for, you know, support call and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, with the new price increase, this is what you guys are going to be looking at. You know, you're still going to be paying for AV and all the security tools, but under managed services, all the stuff is included, unlimited support. In some cases, they're actually saving money, you know, going to managed services. Now, it, at the end of the day, maybe less money in my pocket, but managed services was more of a consistent revenue. I knew month in and month out, that's what I was going to be getting from them, where you know, some days with break fix, it's better than, you know, others where you're making more money, but there's also some days where you're making nothing because nobody's calling. Right. And it's chaos because you don't know, like all the problems that come in at once. So yeah, it's it smooths out your revenue. Okay. Um, so, you know, so the bright, so that campaign, what other big changes have you made? I mean, it sounds like raising your prices was one switching to managed services. I mean, what other, is there any, um, campaigns that had the greatest impact any other things strategies even that you've learned well there's i mean there's every every different campaign brings in different you know you know people like i actually had an fta yesterday and what we ended up doing is we would been marketing to these people for over a year like consistently like every three four months we're sending them a different campaign and one of the managers there was, she actually grabbed me. She's like, she saw my logo. She's like, are you guys the one that sent all those, you know, cool little gadgets, the aspirin, you know, the magnifying glass. And, you know, we, we sent them like an Alka-Seltzer because when everybody, every MSP in the countries, you know, trying to sit by aspirins, we actually ended up pivoting to Alka-Seltzers because, you know, they were sold out. And she's like, and we, we, you know, she said, we sent them so many things and she loved it. And when we actually went in and re-scrubbed our list, we realized we were sending it to like a manager when we should have actually sent it to the owner. And then we actually got in as an, for an FTA with the owner. So every can, I, I think the direct mailers, all the direct mailers, I think is amazing, you know, because it stands out more than you know, anything else that, um, like, uh, you know, emails and stuff. Like that. I think the right dollars is the best. Yeah. Well, I mean, with prospects, when you, when you, if, especially if you don't have permission to email them yet, right. Cause you gotta, technically you should get permission to email before you spam people. And so the direct mail, what's, and with the phone call follow-up is, you know, it does get people's attention. They do remember it more than seeing like a ad on Facebook. I mean, they'll recall a letter that came in their office way more than like, tell me what you ad you saw on Facebook yesterday. Like, yeah. I don't know. Um, but I do remember the letter. And then you can also build the list and you can target it specifically to the people you want, right? Where a lot of like search engine optimization, pay per click. I mean, you still do targeting, but it's not anywhere as precise as direct mail can be with a phone call. And then, you know, eventually getting their email permission using LinkedIn, connecting with them there. So great. I love it. Um, so we're going to see you on stage at boot camp. Um, how many boot camps have you been to, by the way? Um, I think I think I only missed one since I started. So I think three okay. out of my four. Or this okay. is my so four out of my five. 
All right, you're gonna be on stage this time. So um, yeah, so it's, it's it's great. I mean, so what would you tell people if this is their first time coming to boot camp? Because there are some gonna be some first timers. There may be some people, you know, well, I don't know, should I go? Shouldn't I go? What would you say to them? Why is it important to be there in person, not just watch it virtual or the recording? So watching it, it virtual, like, listen, we, we all know you, you don't have your, it doesn't, you don't pay attention that well. You, you're constantly checking your email and you're constantly checking your phone and in person, it's a month, you, you actually absorb the information a lot better. You know, when you're virtual, you don't really pay attention. You forget to turn it on or, you know, they, we take a break and they forget to turn it on. You know, they don't realize, uh, in person, it's a completely different animal. Um, plus honestly, every time I go to a boot camp or even a uh, road show or a producer's club meeting, I always meet different vendors and I love, I love going through and, uh, in meeting different vendors, new ideas, new new products. You don't really, yeah. I mean, I know you can do it virtually, but it's not the same. Yeah, no, for sure. The vendor halls are are great. You know, they're always giving away stuff. They'll take you to dinner. <laughs> you know, like I tell people, if you're really clever about this, like you'll get every meal paid for and you'll get discounts because they always have the show special, you know, so, um, you know, never buy retail. Like, wait till you go to a show and, and buy there. Don't the vendors hate that I tell everyone that, but that's what they do. So, you know, you do get some discounts and, and so forth. Well, well, Mario, we are looking forward to seeing you at boot camp. Good luck. You know, at this point, it's out of my hands. I picked you, you know, we picked the five finalists, but then the audience picks the winner. So we'll look forward to seeing you there at boot camp. Awesome. I appreciate it, Robin. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.